Hello friends, today we will discuss railway track junctions. Track junctions are formed by the combination of points and crossings. Their main objective is to transfer railway vehicle from one track to another or to enable them to cross one track to another. Depending upon the requirements of the traffic, there can be several types of track junctions with simple track layouts. And the first one is a turnout. Uh, this we have discussed in detail in my last session how a turnout works now, depending upon whether the railway vehicle is transferred to left hand side of the main line or right hand side of the main line a turnout can be a left hand turnout or a right hand turnout this is a left hand turnout this is the main line and this is the turnout because here the railway vehicle is being transferred to left of the main line and this is the right hand turnout. Here the railway vehicle is being transferred to the right side of the main line. Now this turnout can be either from a straight main line or even in some cases this main line can also be on curvature. And in that case the turnout can be like this. When the main line is on curvature and the turnout also turns in the same direction of the main line then that is called turnout of similar flexor. Now degree of the curve is measured from the tangent track or straight line and therefore to find out the degree of the turnout with respect to tangent or straight track this formula is used. Let us say dm is the degree of the main line curve, ds is the degree of the turnout and dr the resultant degree of the turnout. So in that case this dr will be ds plus dm or 1 upon rr is equal to 1 upon rs plus 1 upon rm or you can say that radius of the resultant curve will be rm into rs upon rm plus rs. Now for example a 5 degree curve takes off from a 3 degree main line curve in similar flexor. So here the degree of the main line curve is 3. Degree of the branch line is now 3 plus 5 because this 5 degree curve takes off from 3 degree main line curve. So resultant degree will be 8 and radius of the main line curve will be 1750 upon 3. That is the formula correlating degree with the radius of the curve. 1750 upon D. 583 meter and for branch line curve radius will be 219 meter. Now this turnout can be in the opposite direction of the main line also and that is called the turnout of contrary flexor. Now here this is the main line and the branch line takes off in this direction and therefore they are in the opposite direction and that is called the contrary flexor. Now here the resultant degree of the turnout will be ds minus dm. dm is the degree of the main line curve and ds is the degree of the turnout taken off from the main line in the opposite direction. And therefore by the same formula you can say that radius of the resultant turnout will be rm into rs upon rm minus rs. We take the same example again. A 5 degree curve takes off from 3 degree main line curve in contrary flexor now. And therefore, the degree of the main line curve is 3. Degree of the branch line will be 3 minus 5. Now, this negative sign basically here indicates that it is in the opposite direction of the main line. And the radius of the main line curve, you can find out the same formula 1750 upon D. And for the branch line, it will be 875 meter. So that is how you find out the degree of the resultant curve when a turnout takes off from the main line which is already in curvature. Turnout from a curved main line is also called a split. And when a straight line splits up into two different directions with equal radii, then it is called the symmetrical split. In other words, a symmetrical split is a contrary flexor in which the radius of the two curves are same. This is a symmetrical split when this crossing lies centrally between these two outer rails. 
Now, in case of symmetrical split, the layout consists of a pair of points, one acute angle crossing here, four curved lead rails and two check rails. The layout is symmetrical about the center line. That means that the radii of the main track as well as the branching track are equal. The layout provides facilities for diverting vehicles both towards the left and the right. This type of arrangement is suitable for locations with space constraints as it occupies comparatively much less space than a turnout from a tangent track. This is called three throw switch. When two turnouts from the same tangent point of a straight track are taken out, the arrangement is known as three throw. Turnout may be on either side or the same side of the straight track. Now this is a straight track and two turnouts, each turnout having the tongue rail lying side by side and three crossings, one, two and three. Three crossings and two turnouts. Now this type of turnout has many objectionable features and is almost out of use nowadays. This is a three throw switch. You can see here two tongue rails are lying side by side and they have the same common heel block here. Now this is a three throw switch with contrary flexor. It can be in the similar flexor also that both turnouts turn in the same direction of the main line. And this is the example. But as I told you, these are not in use nowadays because they have several objectionable features. It is very difficult to operate the points and heel block is common for both turnouts and therefore an improvement to this is a double turnout or a tandem. Now this is when two turnouts are taken off from the straight main line but their points are at different locations. This arrangement overcomes the defects of the three throw switch. Here the heel of the two switches are at certain distance from each other. That is the heel block for one and that is the heel block for the second one. And hence the turnout takes off from the straight track at two different points. And this arrangement, this arrangement is also called the following point crossing. The next is a diamond crossing. When two tracks cross each other, then it is called a diamond crossing. It does not contain any points. It only has four crossings, two acute angle crossings and two optus angle crossing. Now this is a diamond crossing. When two tracks cross each other, now these two tracks can be with the same gauge or can be one of different gauge, meter gauge and broad gauge line crossing each other. It can be at angle, or it can be a kind of a square crossing. This is a square crossing of two lines. Now this is here a square crossing. When two tracks cross each other at 90 degree, it makes a square crossing. Now in case of diamond crossing, the a vehicle coming from this direction can go straight, but this vehicle cannot be taken to this track or a vehicle coming from this direction cannot be taken to this track. To provide that arrangement that is called a slip. Now this is a diamond crossing here and on this diamond crossing we provide additional rails here so that a vehicle coming from this direction can be taken to this track. Now this is a single slip. When you provide facility only for turning of the vehicle coming from one direction to the next direction. This vehicle cannot be transferred to this track. Now if you provide one two more two more points here, then it is called a double slip. Now here it is possible to transfer a vehicle coming from this direction, from direction C to B also to D also. And similarly from A, it can directly go to B or it can be transferred to D also. Now this is a kind of double slip. Double slip. 
Now this is diamond crossing here and of this diamond crossing you provide two points here and two points here. So a vehicle coming from this direction can be taken through this point and this point to this track or a vehicle coming from this direction can be taken to this track or from this direction to this track. So that is the slip. Next is a crossover. It connects two parallel track or two diverging tracks which may be straight or curved. A crossover between two parallel track is shown here. It consists of two pair of switches, one here and another here. And two crossings, two V type crossings. It is basically two turnouts. One turnout is this one, one turnout is this one and it has some intermediate length. Now this intermediate length between two crossings can be either straight or it will be curved. These two turnouts may be of the same number or may be of different numbers. So if they are of different numbers then this reverse curve will form with different radii of the curve. If they have same number then this reverse curve between two turnouts will be of the same radius. This crossover provides facility of, of transferring a railway vehicle coming from this direction to this track or a railway vehicle coming from this direction to this track. But this does not provide the facility for, to transfer a vehicle from this direction to this track. And for that, there is a Caesar crossover. Two crossovers. When you provide two crossovers, so it has four pair of points now, a diamond crossing here. A Caesar crossover enables transferring a vehicle from one track to another track and vice versa. It, it is provided where lack, lack of space does not permit the provision of two separate crossovers. It is more expensive in initial cost as well as maintenance and therefore generally it is used only in yards where there is a constraint of space. The Caesar's crossover commonly used are of three types depending upon the distance between two parallel tracks they join. The, in the first type, this acute angle crossing of diamond falls within the lead of the main line turnout. In this case, the lead of the main line turnout is considerably reduced and hence this is not a very satisfactory arrangement. In the second type, this acute angle crossing of the diamond falls opposite the crossing of the main line turnout. Here, both the crossings lie opposite each other, resulting in a simultaneous drop of the wheel and this results in jolting. This is also not a desirable type of layout. In the third type of seizure crossover, the acute crossing falls outside the lead of the main crossing. And therefore, the acute crossing of the diamond is far away from the crossing of the main line track. And this is considered the most satisfactory arrangement out of these three layouts. Then comes double junction. Now, double junction is when there are two parallel tracks and from these two parallel tracks, turnout take off in the same direction. It makes a diamond crossing here and this arrangement is called the double junction. Now, this is a double junction. Now, these are two tracks. They can be straight or they can be on curve also. And from both of these tracks, you take turnouts from the same point. So, you make a diamond here and this total arrangement is called the double junction. Go let it track. Now, this is a track here. This is a parallel track here. Now, if you close this track for some reason, then you provide a diversion here. This is called gondoletic track. Gondoletic track just to divert this train to this track temporarily and then take on this track because this part of the track is under repair. Gondoletic track can also be provided near stations and this is a kind of optional track and purpose is to allow passenger trains to run very close to station platform while allowing freight and other traffic to operate farther from the passenger platform. So if platform is in this direction, then passenger train can be taken to these lines so that they are close to platform 
and freight train can be taken directly on the main track so that they are away from the platform. That is the purpose of providing gondoletted track. Another one is triangle. Triangle is basically a symmetrical split combined with a straight track here. Now, this is used to turn the direction of the engine and particularly provided in yards to change the direction of the engine when it is not possible to provide turn table. So in this case what is done a engine coming from this direction is taken to this track and then from here it is taken back to this track and then again the point is changed and then it is taken to this direction. So the direction of the engine is now changed from this to this. Now this is suitable you know, only in small stations or in small yards where coastly turntable cannot be provided. Otherwise, now in all junctions, turntables are provided where you take the engine on a table and it rotates and change the direction of the engine. Gathering line. It is a sloping line from which number of parallel tracks are taken off as shown here. It is provided in yard to serve various requirements and the angle which the gathering line makes with parallel siding is known as the gathering angle or gathering line angle and it is equal to the angle of crossing adopted in the yard. Now this is a example of gathering line. This is the main line and when it approaches the station or yards you take several turnouts from this main line but all they are parallel and therefore their angle is same. So these are different types of track junctions which can be made the different combinations of points and crossings. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions you can write in the comment box.